Divine Truth Spirit Experience Experiences of people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. In this recording, titled Interview Series with Constance about her progress, Mary channels Constance, now Juju, a woman who lived as a slave in the Indies over 300 years ago, and Jesus interviews Constance about how she, by her own effort and acceptance of advice from helping friends, has now moved from the earthbound condition to living in the fifth sphere of the spirit world. Recorded on the 7th of November 2018 from 11.30am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Session 3 well, Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. It might even be the middle of the night and you should be asleep perhaps, but <laughs> Mary and I are here today again. We're helping our team get a bit more practice and also doing a bit more mediumship today. So um, hopefully you enjoy the mediumship. It's, uh, we're going to return to some people we've talked to before and we'll introduce those as we go along during the session of the mediumship itself. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it and uh, we, we welcome you along on our channel. <laughs> it feels strange saying that. <laughs> it's uh, because a, a lot of our shooting is not, uh, we don't sort of plan it very much. So if we just come here and sit down and away we go. <laughs> but, uh, and, but it's the theme discussions that we have a tendency to prepare quite a lot, isn't it? Yes. But the spirit discussions, we don't prepare very much at all. And, and our cut notes people out the side there are uh, working furiously to properly properly chapterize the the spirit discussions that you receive but the rest of the discussions are a bit easier to look after for, for them for, yeah. for them yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not for us because we have more preparation to do we can <laughs> when we come and do spirit discussions we can just come, come and sit down and away we go so that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully uh, you enjoy what, what our discussion is going to be. We don't know what it's going to be at this stage. Mm -mm. And so we're just going to give it a, a small pause and then we'll get started. Hello, friend. G'day, Constance. Uh, it is, but you've changed your name, I gather. <laughs> I have. <laughs> it's a difficult to, to convey exactly to Mary, but uh, yeah. sounds a lot like Junaya. Yeah. You, you can call me Juju. Juju. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I don't know uh, how, how that'll go because I think of you as Constance, but anyway. <laughs> It's no problem. Yeah. It's no problem. Whatever you call me, I'm I'm it's so happy to come and yeah. it's so lovely. Yeah. And please call me call me Constance. <laughs> it's okay. Well, for the sake of our listeners, we probably just need to say that Juju, who I'll be referring to from now on, <laughs> is Constance from our previous discussion. It's not that important in only in that was a celebration to let go of the 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 darkness of my earth existence and the trauma of my past and i felt enslavement around the name of constance and so juju is is like my joy manifest i feel <laughs> so happy now oh that's good that's good so the last time we spoke to you, when we first spoke to you, well, you, you were a pretty dark place, weren't you, Constance? Uh, you, were, you were in the, you could say earthbound, but quite in a hellish condition, wasn't it? And ha harsh condition where you were harming people. Mm. And then the second time we discussed things with you, you had started going through the repentance process with that and, and dealing with that emotionally. So since that time, what have you been up to? <laughs> My life changed so much from that point that I spoke with you and I wanted to come and thank you. Mm. So much has happened. It's difficult to say everything, but I have so much 
a love and joy in my life now mm. and I spoke to you about the freedom that I felt and truly in in feeling in letting go of so many things in feeling my my past on earth finally I did feel freedom but that is nothing compared to now the 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 joy and sense of openness and uh, fulfillment that I feel now. I've found many of my ancestors and the family of my nation, my original nations in Africa and and we have such a spirit amongst us of joy and celebration and there is much much pleasure that we have here in our homes but also we we visit the earth now and it is different from my visits in the past uh, now i visit to to try to help the many who are descendants really from from our enslavement uh to to heal what i have had to heal for for the the imprint of it all is still there. Yeah, no, that's very true, isn't it? Perhaps uh, for the sake of uh, the people listening, Constance, if we could just talk a little about, um, you know, the last time we talked to, uh, to you, you were quite like, you were going through a lot of sadness about the repentance process, weren't you? Like that, that was where you're up to. I had been full of rage. Yeah, yeah. And um, I suppose most people on earth, as you know, there's a lot of people on earth who've got a lot of anger to deal with. And they'd probably be surprised to feel, to hear that you've dealt with a lot of that anger in a short period of time. Mm. And perhaps what we need to do is to just ask you, like, what, what was that process like for you as a spirit? And and what help did you receive and those kind of questions? Well, really, I've come today because you helped me the, the most <laughs> in the beginning. It so is it to say to that, a start. Well, it yeah. is to say that that start was the biggest help I have ever received. Even though many have done more now for me and with me or, or, or to assist me, it was this these discussions with you that changed my life so the first discussion that we had uh which was the so if we will step through the discussions we had basically the first discussion we had you were in this really very dark place really trying to influence particularly women on earth uh, to be enraged with other with men in particular and particularly abusive men and um and during that during that time as a spirit, it it was like you were so bound in that in that process, wasn't it? Yes. That you couldn't even realise hardly that you'd even passed or that anything had really had changed very much. No, and and yes, I was in this state of no consideration of time or thought, or yeah. it, I was in a in a frenzy of of trying to place these anger into others on the earth mm -hmm. and it was not my experience of anger that I was having I was attempting to push it into other people that we could share in it and yeah. feel feel communion of, with the anger, with and, and a almost, common feeling. Yeah, and almost like a self-righteous, like a, a self-righteous feeling that the anger, the continued anger and rage with the situation was justified and continued to be remain justified as well, didn't it? For yes, you? yes, and and I had done this, I had done this so much. And um, and when you look back now, can you remember how many years you'd done that now as a as a period of time, this rage projected back at the earth? 
it, it is difficult to say. Yeah. Do you remember the year of your passing or, or the time period of your passing? I, I didn't know it at the time. A hundred, a hundred and sixty years, perhaps, or between sixty and a hundred years. It's difficult to be clear. And in the first instance, you wouldn't have, not, after passing, you wouldn't have even known where, you know, that you had passed. Probably is that the case? No. It's just like a strange sensation of a change of some kind that you couldn't identify. No. Yes, I passed in a violent way, yeah. and. It really, the violence of my death and the, the, the violence of my death was like a frenzy of trauma and it continued, uh, I, that sense of a frenzied trauma continued. I was full of rage and trauma at my passing and then uh, it took some time to, to, I would not say I ever had a conscious thought. I have passed. I didn't have much conscious thought. I just acted. I was just incensed. I was aware that I was no longer on the earth, but I didn't have the sense that I didn't analyze this. Mm -hmm. I saw what was happening with my daughter and we discussed this. Yes. yes. This this how this added to my my sense of rage and entitlement to my rage, but I didn't ever consider myself. Yeah. And my state. And I suppose this is where where a lot of people on Earth sort of when they when they hear about spirits first off, you know, they frequently sort of feel, why is it that they don't understand where they are and everything, and they don't understand a lot of the times how uh, emotional the whole thing is like, and mm -hmm. and and so you're so bound up in the emotion of what what went on, particularly if if you had your circumstances where you're so bound up in the emotion of what went on. It makes it very, very difficult to have logical thought about, oh, well, I've probably passed now and maybe I should, uh, I'm still alive, so maybe there's other people who passed who are still alive and maybe I can get to those somehow. And you know, none of those real questions really come to you until you've resolved the emotion that you feel uh, about your passing and, and, and particularly about the injustice of your passing in, in a case like yourself, your own. And, and this is something that I wish to, to say um, it is difficult to express through the medium the level of my joy and gratitude, mm -hmm. but uh, it really is the work that you do to help has such an impact. It Because one is in that state of the frenzy, it is difficult to to cease. And the the attention upon the earth this is where the attention is and so so unless someone on the earth is going to bring you to attention <laughs> it's very hard for you to recognize like when spirits are trying to help you break away from that that process isn't it the love the love for for us on earth there's sincere love the real love is is very lacking and this creates an attraction for us yes and so so i suppose you could say that first discussion was a bit of a, a big awakening wasn't it for for you in terms of what was happening yes and then and then obviously you got some assistance didn't you about this process of like letting go of the anger so and and that gets to my point earlier about so how did you go about that you know because a lot of people on earth as you know, project all their anger constantly outwards, which never really resolves the anger internally. Mm. So, so what did you have to do to actually work your way through the feelings about why you were so angry and, and letting go of the anger? What, what did you f have to do and, and how were you helped? 
well, your assistance and your love was an immense help to me. But from a personal perspective, beyond our discussion, it was so important for me to revisit the past, to connect to my past and to... I wish to describe it well. Yeah, well, so, perhaps we could help with a bit of a uh, lead-in because in the last discussion I had with you about the forgiveness and repentance process, we talked a lot about the rage being driven by the grief, the, the suppressed grief about how people treated you. So how did you come to recognise sort of where the rage was coming from? What, what happened Yes, there? this this is, the, this is w- that which I wish to describe well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Allow me a moment. I came to understand that the anger was assisting me to avoid the memory of the past. It was a sort of a way for you to gain power over the past rather than submit to the reality of it. Yes, and it's, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? The mm. way that we... I... One could say I was obsessed by my life on earth and yet it is almost as if I didn't relate it to myself, to my... I I was so incensed by how I had been treated and yet I didn't allow that treatment to be uh, felt or acknowledged. So you didn't soften emotionally to the treatment? No. You sort of chose to distance yourself from it as much as you could? Yes. Mm. And I began this in my earth life, Mm -hmm. of course. Mm. And so this moment when I understood, firstly, that I must visit my past, I must visit it, I must know my past because... At the time I met you, I had really even almost forgotten why I was so angry. I, ha- I was just, I didn't remember anymore. So you were embroiled in the emotion of anger without even remembering I didn't think the main sources of what that anger was all about. No, I was filled with the beliefs that were, I see now, the product of my avoidance of my memory and past. And these beliefs uh, fueled my continued rage. But I had, I had long ago d- disconnected myself from the actual memories that created the belief. Mm. And so this was a process of my discussion with you helped to break the obsession that I had in the first instance and you took me back to the memory and that assisted me then in the coming times to understand that I had been using this rage to avoid softening, as you say, softening to the memory. And particularly the grief about the memories that you have. Yes, and and so as I connected more to the memory of really what was my life and what was my experience, I began to feel rage again, but it was more personal. Mm Mm-hmm personalized and and then there came another point where i understood that this anger was as this even this personal experience of anger it was a buffer for the the trauma the powerlessness the sadness of my existence but this didn't this didn't come without me first personalizing the anger, feeling the anger personally about the injustice of my situation. It had to become my own. 
And I, I feel that's interesting too, because uh, you know, quite frequently myself and Mary spend time talking about everything's really personal. <laughs> you know, it's, we project it outwards and blame other people, but at the end of the day, it is feelings we have inside of ourselves. So we'd be far better off focusing on the personal side of the whole thing rather than trying to blame external things mm. for what we feel. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and sadly, what I see now in my work now, helping people on the earth, is that very sadly, they have inherited the beliefs, for example, that I had without the memory mm. of the, without my memory. So they don't even really know why they're so enraged. No. Yeah. And this, this I want to help. Mm. I want to help people to heal this before they enter my state on passing. Because while they may not enter into such a frenzied state as I did, because it was such a traumatic passing, many of them are quite entrenched and are tempted into a frenzied state, depending upon the way that they pass. Mm, mm. So, so what you're really saying there is that many people on earth are no longer experiencing, that well, they, they, they have not physically in their lifetime had the experience of trauma. And yet they believe now, because of the multi-generational emotion that's been passed down, they believe that they will have the experience of trauma unless they project rage and anger and, and, and even abuse at times at, at people that they p feel are the potential sources of that trauma. Yes. Mm. And, and this creates a big cycle, doesn't it, on earth of just each new generation, basically not letting go of the tra trauma of the past that yes. didn't even happen to them. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it, it is not only in family lines, but cultural groups. Of course, groups. yeah, because many culture groups have had the experience that you've had where you have a yes. culture group that was enslaved by another group and so forth, and, and the groups that did this slavery are also got the same problem, they, this multi-generational feeling of superiority, which they don't really understand and don't really get and they, they've never had a personal experience of demonstrating they are superior in any way but but they still feel they are yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and these are often this is where people need to choose to feel their feelings rather than look through things intellectually isn't it mm -hmm. because that's the big trouble if you try to e examine a lot of emotions we actually feel from an intellectual perspective we, we don't really have an event in our life that we can attach them to no mm. And part of my work, and I'm really still very new, <laughs> uh, is to attempt to assist people to make the connection to their personal feelings again. What I see, it's, it's very interesting the way I see it in some way resembles my own experience because many of them have beliefs that are not questioned, are taken as truth, that drive actions. But much like myself, they have distanced themselves from the personal feelings driving those beliefs. And while they experience emotion as a result, or yes, as a result of acting in the beliefs, and they reinforce them to themselves beliefs through certain interactions and they have, for example, anger arising from this, this is different to coming backwards to the self and saying, what do I already feel before I take the action based on the belief? What do I already feel that causes me to hold this belief? Does that yeah, it's no. difficult because I'm new, yeah, and yeah. it's difficult to convey exactly what I mean. But yeah. it is something like this, yeah. and as a spirit, it is it is quite interesting to try and interrupt such a process.
because mm-hmm. most people are focused outwards on mm-hmm. their action and their day-to-day living. And yet, as a group here, we wish to help people take these more inward steps. Mm-hmm. And yet all we really have at our disposal is the influence through our intention upon their thoughts and perhaps some external events. And so this is, this is quite um, so sort of interesting. Uh, yeah, and I suppose we need to if we if we what what I think we might do then now is we'll talk a little bit about the work itself, and then what we'll do is we'll ask you a bit about your life, sure. uh, your life as you now experience it. But let's talk a little bit about the work that you've been assigned to do, which basically came from your desire, didn't it? Your assignment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so with regard. Go on, you say, you want to say. <laughs> I, I, I wished to say that if you would first like to finish recapping uh, my journey before we discuss the work, that is okay too. Yes, yeah, but I was thinking, uh, I think it's fairly clear what the journey is and, and particularly with regard to that, the way in which you've dealt, you had to deal with your anger, you had to reconnect with why you were angry yes. rather than just stay in a state of rage constantly without ever reconnecting to it. So that, that obviously was very important. Yes, and, and making the shift in focus, just as I described, between the external events and using them to, to really justify my continued rage yes. rather than saying... Uh, this rage is already within me and it comes from a past memory and it is my rage. Even if everything else changes around me, I still have anger. And you would still have it even if everything around you was nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so, yes, if we continue a bit more on this discussion about what, what happened before you were assigned this work, <laughs> that before you, you started this new task you're on and, and got into this more sort of joyous condition, obviously in connecting to the events of your life then, you must have had quite a lot of emotion to feel. Yes. Yeah. It was overwhelming and yet relieving. And there are still elements that I still must connect to, connect to and mm-hmm. remove. But mm-hmm. I feel so relaxed now. And the period around the other times that we spoke, this was immensely overwhelming. And I... <laughs> I feel very fortunate in that because I'm much more articulate now, (laughs) but I never was much of an intellectual person on my earth, Mm -hmm. on the earth. I felt quite, uh, I felt quite, well, I didn't feel, I didn't analyse myself very much. Mm. That is really what I want to say. Mm. I didn't analyse myself very much. And it's also probably true to say that you weren't given the opportunity to do so very no, much either, no, given your my... circumstances of your life. Yes, mm. yes. But what that created was that when I passed, I was, I was in this frenzy without much personal reflection mm. or reflection on myself. But then around the time of our discussions and you brought me back to the past, what I was able to do is to almost enter a similar state when it came to feeling about my past. So this unconscious or unanalyzed, I couldn't call it unconscious, but I hope I'm conveying what I mean. Yeah, maybe if I could summarize, summarize what I can feel from, from you to the listeners. It's sort of like you were in such an unthinking frenzy when it came to expressing your rage. Yes. But now that you realized that you had to connect to other emotions, it was almost like you became an unfrenzied, you know, you became a frenzy of connecting to those emotions. Yeah. But yes. but you were feeling them for yourself rather than attempting to share them and all those you were owning them, taking responsibility for them. It it was a 
magical process yeah. that made me more and more whole and, and made this is me why more you've... and more connected. And now I, if you could see me, I'm quite a different presence now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to just take care here with our listeners because they won't realise that because of the way that you processed your emotion, you haven't taken very long to process what are some quite yes. very, you know, quite difficult emotions to process of trauma, torture and other kinds of events. All I did for all, at all times was to, to, to do that. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't try to or attempt to stop yourself from doing that by judging the process or by, you know, trying to think about the process. Or... I analysed nothing. Yeah. I had the love of God which helped me, which came through mm. this process, but it was simple. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You didn't have to go through this complex sort of uh, internal intellectual argumentation with yourself to go through it because you ma the biggest breakthrough you'd actually made is that since you were in a frenzy emotionally <laughs> with regard to the negative emotion, you basically just transferred that across to this new process yes. and, and just said, decided, well, I'm just going to do that now. <laughs> so, and the rewards were great. Of course. And, and also uh, I want to probably emphasise to our listeners the time of that process because you did it that way was very short. And what, what I notice on, with people on earth is we, we talk to them about this emotional process work and the working through things emotionally. But on earth, there's so much uh, judgment and lack of acceptance of emotion. And also, of course, you've got your day-to-day -day life where you've, you do need to eat and you do need to sleep and you do need to do these other things. And a lot of these things sort of interfere with the emotional, uh, the allowance of a complete emotional process. Yeah. And you didn't have anything to interfere with it. Nothing. Hence the rapidity of the change. Yes. Yeah. In some ways, this is my nature. I've become mm. very... I can't call it single-minded because it doesn't feel like a mind state. No, it's a soul. It's a, you're in your soul. You're in your soul expression. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Which, is, which is very good that you accepted that at such an early phase in your development. Mm. So a lot, a lot of people, as you know, you may have met uh, some by now. Yes who, you know, even by the sixth sphere of their development, they still haven't really entered that phase no. of their life. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. And hence they take hundreds of years to make the same transitions. Mm. Mm. Okay, so that's really good. Uh, that, that's uh, really good that you did that. And, and I suppose um, what uh, probably we need to say to our listeners is that it would be great to see uh, this way of dealing with things being allowed on earth, you know, because mm. because as you know, even Mary and I get we get a lot of criticism for when we process emotion, and, mm. and it's nobody really allows you to do it. Mm. <laughs> it, it of family or friends or acquaintances or the society generally, the medical profession, you know, <laughs> even politics and all all walks of life, you know, business yes. and and everything. None of them feel that you're allowed to do that yeah. <laughs> you know and so it it creates an environment that uh is very anti going through your, your emotions in a very quick uh and deliberate way mm. Mm. that's yeah. very true mm. and i i see on the earth sadly i do see a frenzy of emotion but mm. it, it's in a very negative sense yes uh, without this beautiful, surrendered, uh, personal, uh, internal recognition of true grief and true trauma and true fear and allowing, as you say, or as you teach, this process of those things to simply <laughs> come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet there is... a quite a frenzy of of almost almost at times it resembles the state of many spirits similar to myself who mm. were in a frenzy of avoidance of the past 
based on beliefs from the driven by the avoidance of the past. Yes, yeah. so really in a way it's a frenzy of addiction, isn't it? Addiction yes. to avoid rather than a frenzy of just getting into your feelings and dealing with them and getting them over and done with. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So because of that reason, that uh, way that you were very accepting of God's way, it really isn't it? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a really good thing. But... I understand that now. I yeah, didn't you then. didn't have the time. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to do it, I have to do it, it has to be done, <laughs> go and do it. <laughs> yeah, but, but now you sort of can start to see that it is God's way. That's the way the soul's been designed. So, so, and because you accepted God's way in your heart before you even really knew what you were accepting mm -hmm. and, and you didn't, you know, intellectually judge it or condemn it in yourself, um, you could go through it in a fairly... In a, in a very rapid way, but also a fairly seamless way where where there's not too much assistance that's needed aside from the person just telling you what the next one is. <laughs> yes, and this is why I wished to acknowledge you both really today. This is mm -hmm. my main purpose in coming because you helped me cease the frenzy. Yeah. yeah. And this is such a gift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, I did receive help at yeah. various times. And really the help... I found myself surrounded by love mm, mm. and it was that that helped me the most mm. because I was so simple in my approach to feeling my past once I knew that this once I knew that this was what was required and what was benefiting me so much I I, I was driven to it to, driven to do it uh, but really I so many times I was overwhelmed by the the contrast between what I was remembering and the the darkness and the hardness and the sadness only to find that I was encased in loving presence at that very moment and mm -hmm. that assisted me even more <laughs> <laughs> so that is the kind of assistance that I have received here yeah yeah so were there any times where you sort of become a little bit stuck and you needed a bit of help, like from somebody to say, well, this is about that? Or, <laughs> yes, about and, and, and in fact, even now, mm -hmm. there are other aspects that I am uh, being assisted with and being shown things about even the beliefs that came into me when I was born on yes. the earth. And these things that still have a residue and still drove some actions and there are still many things that I need to release in that regard. So really I would say, perhaps it's good to say it this way. Most of my sin on the earth, the way that I understand it now, most of my sin came as the response to other people first harming me greatly. And so by relieving myself of all the harm that was done to me. I have done a lot of repentance about the harm that I did as a result. But I have achieved such a different state because I really had so, because of the nature of my life, I had so few opportunities to engage with my own personal sin in other Aside words, to harm others. To yeah. harm you others. You have a few opportunities to harm others. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Aside from So in some ways it's almost a blessing in some <laughs> ways, isn't it? <laughs> in a strange way. In a strange way, way. <laughs> yeah. Because, it, because there are a lot of people who have plenty of opportunity, including your own, the mm -hmm. perpetrators of your own abuse, had plenty of opportunity to harm others. And, of course, those people will find their process a lot more difficult. I had plenty of desire to harm others, mm -hmm. but... I, no opportunity. <laughs> I feared my death too much exactly. to take them. Yeah. And so, um, and I took many opportunities, as you know, after I passed. Certainly. But, but I have other challenges now. There are certain beliefs when, when one is born into slavery that come into a person or when one is born into a very... Um, you know, the slavery, mm -hmm. a, a, a restricted environment, to do with the expression of thoughtful action. 
deciding what one wants for oneself and doing that. And so I have been working on that a lot, mm -hmm. and which mm -hmm. is why I'm so joyful and excited mm -hmm. to be doing this work now that yeah. uh, we've mentioned a few times. Yeah. So let, let's go to the work now, shall okay. we? Just because we have the opportunity to talk about that a little bit. You, you were speaking uh, earlier about how um, this, this sort of desire to now attempt to influence the emotions and thoughts of people who have this multi-generational sin, if we can call it that. It's yes. this multi-generational era that's ended them that they, they, that really isn't a part of their own experience, but, but because it's now in them, they, they now act upon it and make decisions about it that are very harmful to themselves and others. Mm. And so, so what mechanisms are, at, are, at your, <laughs> are available to you as a spirit? And... Like most people would be interested to know, like, do you sit down and plan out what you're going to do to try to help somebody? How, how does it how does it work? <laughs> uh, no, no. Okay, let me. And perhaps we should also say that uh, sometimes we help in ways that people don't think. And we also help, we are focused on how families treat each other and the dynamics there are many dynamics between men and women that in fact have have come from multi-generationary and through a history of slavery as well and this is not just between for example black people and white people but also how families who've been born in slavery or whose ancestors were born into slavery how they interact with each other. So I wanted to mention that we don't need to have detail, but just for the sake of your listeners, because uh, they may anticipate that we are only working interracially. Mm. But that's not true. Not the truth, yeah. Okay. So now, how we go about it? Yeah. So you sit down and have a power out here? And, uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Things are not so formalized no. <laughs> although very ordered but things are not so formalized and i'm new i'm new to this so i have someone who helps me to learn how to do it yes but really we are i am learning to become like a tuning fork for frequencies yes <laughs> on the earth and when you say frequencies, we probably yes, need to be a bit I more specific. I will explain. Yeah. I will explain. Yeah. Uh, so this, it's like a resonance between my desire to assist with those issues that I've mentioned, a resonance between that desire and a situation on the earth where that problem exists or a person on the earth where that problem exists. And then a third factor, which is difficult for me to even understand at this point, but I should call it that there is an opportunity uh, and I'm not really sure. I just sense that there's an opportunity for influence, but I'm not really sure how I know that yet. Is, does that make sense? Certainly, yeah. and, and perhaps... Um, I want to leave it for you to discover how you know that okay. um, rather than talk to you about how okay. you know that. Um, obviously, that happens with every spirit in any, in every condition. So that's yes. interesting in itself, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. And, and it's so. something beyond what they can intellectually or even sometimes emotionally sense. It's just they feel impelled to get mm. involved in a situation. Mm without really understanding why the, the impulsive feeling is there. Yes. Yeah. 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 So obviously it's coming from somewhere else. <laughs> what do you reckon? Obviously, <laughs> obviously. Obviously. And I, I don't doubt that, that my loving mother God has, mm -hmm. a, has a large... Uh, I understand it's an instrument of God's operations. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not exactly sure how to... How, how it works. How it works. Yeah, of course. Uh, and so in those cases, then I feel drawn towards that person. And my desire is such that I want to go. And so I go. And then there begins a process. It varies. 
sometimes there's a process of my observation that starts to happen of this person or this family. And can I explain to our listeners first that frequently your impulsiveness to go happens sometimes before the event occurs. Yes, yes. And, is that, and that's an amazing thing that most people on earth wouldn't realise, that, that, that the feeling of direction that you're getting to go to help a situation mm-hmm. is actually happening even prior to the situation actually happening. Yes. So, so, so you're there and present while, while it's actually happening, hence the observation. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's right. And sometimes I might observe for a period of weeks by earth standards. And it may not be continuous, but again, there is a, there is a, a knowledge, a sense of when is good to be there. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm gaining an education as well as attempting to be of service yes. through these, yes. these experiences. And I do see that my guides are so wise in that they are helping me to see many residual things within myself at at these same moments. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I go and I begin to observe. And then I really am waiting for even more specific opportunities where I could prompt a person's attention towards uh, an element of truth or a, diff- or a way to challenge the belief that they are entrenched in. So a new idea, an, an idea that is new to them. And there are many, because the media, the media, <laughs> I didn't understand the media. Um, it's, it's amazing. There's, There's all these ideas flying everywhere. <laughs> yes. And there are so many opportunities, especially in places like the United States, uh, where there are so many opportunities to prompt a person's attention towards a new idea. The problem is that they are often so used to going between ideas <laughs> that they jump off that idea very too quickly. Soon, yeah, too, too soon. soon. <laughs> but that is where I can be helpful yeah. by impressing on them really a, a loving back. feeling hmm. when they are engaged with that idea. Yeah. And yeah. this helps. Yeah. It helps and it's kind of fun yeah. <laughs> to see how it works. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. interesting yes. how we can influence others without talking to others. Yes, mm. yes, mm. yes. So I enjoy this so much. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so uh, that's one case where I, it's sure. almost like I, I hang about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Through impulse, you're impelled to be there, of course. Yes, and my, it's my desire. Of course. I understand that. that it has I, to operate with your desire, I, otherwise you wouldn't go there, would you? Yes, yeah. and it's not necessarily continuous. No. I can go and learn other things yeah. and come back. And, yeah. But there is so much allowance for my visiting. And I must say that as this desire has grown in me, the experience of being around the earth is different for me as well before it felt muddy Mm -hmm. (laughs) or sleazy shall we say yes yes yeah because you've got codependent addiction that you're feeding to people on earth are feeding you with things and it feels very uh you feel embroiled in it but it doesn't feel pure or innocent it uh, feels that both are both are guilty yes Mm. and of course i didn't analyze that mm. and I still mm. don't analyze it as well as you but <laughs> I've had opportunity to do a lot of analysis over the many years <laughs> but uh, now the feeling is very light and bright and I feel brighter uh, not only when I'm there, mm-hmm. as opposed to when I was there before, but when I return, yeah. which is lovely. And I do understand that, uh, why that happens. Now, I have a couple of questions about uh, just experiences that you've had with your work. Sure. If I can ask a few. Sure. Have you ever had an opportunity to uh, sort of influence a person in their uh, awake state on Earth and then meet up with them in their sleep state and have a conversation with them? Yes, yes. And how did that go? Like, what, what's that like? Did, did they sort of know that you had influenced them in, your awake, in, in their awake state? Well, I, I can tell them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I, I, for example, there's one young man and 
his name is Chris and he he's 16 and so I've been around him and his family where does he live it's in the United in States, the United States yeah. yes and there are many issues within his family we don't need to go into all of them mm. but for example um, I have been able to challenge some of his some of the ideas that his parents are giving to him through his lived experience in his awake state yep. through similar in the process we described earlier and then when he has been sleeping I've had the opportunity to come to him and at first he was not so interested in uh, having a discussion but I was able to remind him of the thing that happened that caused him to, to, to pause ponder or pause yeah. and question something and once I did that there was such a an interest from him about how that could happen and why it happened and and I was able to say a lot more to him in his sleep state about mm -hmm. what I wanted to convey to him or what I was encouraging him to question. And and this has funny mixed results. Yes, yeah. Sometimes that works very well and the person wakes up with an even stronger sense of, of what we have been discussing. Yeah, like they have a stronger deliberate intention to, to challenge whatever it is that is false. Yes, and they feel more confident in the challenge. Yes. In, not in a nasty way, but they just feel better about themselves for having the question. Sometimes when people ask a question, then they question themselves and their own integrity. But sometimes it works very well to have these sleep state experiences because the person wakes up and feels, well, even though everyone else seems to think this is wrong, I think I need to look further at it. Yes, yep. But sometimes it back... Well, it doesn't <laughs> backfire. What I see is that it it's sort of stirs things more for the person. And as we know, as I know so well, <laughs> the emotions that are driving the beliefs are sometimes very intense. And unfortunately on Earth, not felt properly. That's right. <laughs> Hence the, the responses that sometimes happen. Yes, and sometimes the discussion causes the person to wake up with a, an, a, a real unease because mm. the, and sometimes this is even sign of further progress because they've been so confident in their questioning now that it's begun to expose the emotions that have really been driving the belief that they're now questioning and it feels a little uncomfortable or yes. a lot uncomfortable. And, and unfortunately, most people on earth um, react the way that every most people on earth react to it and that is try to shut it down and yes. deny it and that yes. obviously is what causes our, the problems then yes yeah and sometimes i'm <laughs> and sometimes i am then doing things that even make them feel worse in the short term yes yeah, yes yeah. <laughs> like i delay something or yeah. right I make it so that they can't remember where their car keys are, so they have to sit in their house for longer and, <laughs> and feel more frustration. And as you know, when you're, you're just looking for something, you, your mind can stay occupied on something else, which is what I want for them, yeah, yeah. To, to keep ruminating and questioning <laughs> about this thing. And, yeah. and so sometimes it feels... I think perhaps people think it's quite mischievous of yeah. us, but really uh, it's not. Yeah, and the trouble is on Earth too, isn't it? In Western society in particular, there are so many distractions that a person can easily go just from one distraction to another distraction. And, 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 it, and you may just get a, be able to drop a little bit of a thought into their mind but <laughs> if if you don't uh, if, if you know if they if they just replace it with another distraction yeah. then then it has very little benefit mm -hmm. yes and and that is why we do things now which are actually causing a a delay or a mm -hmm. blockage or a breakdown or a power outage or something that mm -hmm. causes a uh, a delay of the satisfaction of the addiction. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So a lot of people on earth probably wouldn't know that that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd wonder, who's working against my life now? <laughs> yes, many. It, 
people get a bit uh, suspicious. Uh, what's the word for that? The, there's another word for that. I can't. It doesn't quite come to mind. But paranoid. Yeah, paranoid yeah. And, and worried that uh, you know the things are fatalistic, <laughs> more fatalistic yeah. than what they yes. might have thought earlier. Mm. Yes, and mm. and it's quite. I find it funny because it's such a different life to my life <laughs> on Earth. But also, as you say, many people think that we are evildoers when we're attempting to, to work for their good. Yes, yes. And yeah. so you know, I, I encourage all of your listeners to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you slow down, more. Yeah, there probably will be a smoother life as a yes. result. <laughs> and to allow their, the thing that is bothering them some... Airtime, as they like to say now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, uh, it's very important. If I can just uh, also ask you a little about your, your helpers, your guides. Yeah. Um, so where are they from? In terms of their location or their culture? <laughs> well, let's look firstly where are they from Earth uh, in terms of how long they've been and how long they've been in the spirit world, but also, you know, what culture they came through from Earth. But then also where are they now? Where, how, where do they live now in mm. the spirit world? Okay. So to answer your last question first, mm -hmm. they are all in what you refer to as the celestial heaven. They all come from there and yeah. I feel very honoured so are so honoured that mm. they would help me, yep. spend time with me. Yep. And I have so much joy and their presence is magnificent. Very loving, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. In terms of their origins upon the earth, as you might imagine, we pay little attention, to, the attention to this, but mm. it is significant to say that I would call us from the African nations, mm -hmm. if, if that is clear. And there, is a, there, is a, there, there are people who guide me who have been passed uh, into the spirit world for a thousand years. Mm. And the, I, I must say that I have spent time with them and with them showing me their life and how it was and to experience a connection to my, really my culture or my heritage from an earthly sense, I feel, so, I do feel some pride about it now. Mm -hmm. I felt so much shame about it on earth and mm. perhaps that is why they have shown me. But I love to wear now the headdress yeah. of my peoples and and wear the the colours and the the tr more traditional, uh, uh, I, I just love to feel a pride about where I've come from. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, isn't it, in the spirit world, because, um, you know, many, many people on earth wouldn't realise that, that the celestial heavens are sort of heavily populated by people who had no and who history at the moment does not recognise at all. Mm. So, so, and often the people that history does recognise are not in the celestial heavens at this yes. stage. Yeah. Yes. And also that I, I was born into, uh, a, well, I was forced into a Christian mm -hmm. society, but some of my guides had no concept really of a loving single God. Uh, when they were on earth and that did not stop their progress because they were open to the assistance that came mm. and and as you know Christianity is not the basis for knowledge about God no and frequently those who are Christian find it difficult to progress at times, particularly if they've had a very intellectual upbringing in their, mm. Christian, in mm. their Christian faith. Mm. I only point it out because many people might associate uh, progress with God, uh, with this 
single God mm -hmm. uh, belief system. And once, the, once uh, a person passes, of course, they come to find the true nature of God uh, after time, don't they? It's not, yes. uh, and, but again, it's a lot about what you hold on to as, mm -hmm. belief, as a belief system, isn't it? Rather than, rather than what um, you've been taught, it's more about how addicted you are to staying with what you've been taught yeah. as to how, what, what effect that has upon your progress in the spirit world. It's so wonderful. Mm. It's so wonderful. So all of your spirit friends would have plenty of information to give you at any time. Yes. But uh, do they give you information, sort of bits and pieces, or or just, or do they give it you like a whole heap of information, <laughs> and then you've got to go away and? <laughs> sort that out? Well, now you're asking questions that you already know the answer. Well, I, 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 my <laughs> listeners may not. So. Yes. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm given information as I ask for it. Mm. And also uh, what is very beautiful is how much assistance I'm being given to, to know myself and know and say or do what I want for myself. And, and so my learning comes about because I, I reach a point where I want to know the next thing and then I'm told immediately and with more detail and clarity than I could have anticipated. Yes. Yeah. But, and, and I'm often told through experience, not yes. through what, how you would on earth perhaps convey they, it through language. And they assist you to have the experience, don't they? They do. They yeah. we Almost go, create the experience as well. Yes, yeah. yes. And what I have noticed that here, there is always an opportunity to teach a truth uh, whenever one needs to be taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what Mary and I are trying to do, you know, with a lot of things we're doing, trying to encourage people to embrace a process, you know, and embrace uh, uh, some activity. Yes. And, and in the process of embracing the activity, you, you do have realisations and changes, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. And it's wonderful what you're doing. And, and it's, it's wonderful to learn in this way. Mm -hmm. And while perhaps the helpers on earth may not be as abundant, there are many of us here who wish to act as helpers. And so if people on earth are willing to engage action and activity and desire our help, much like the help I receive as soon as I want help, there will be help there if they slow down and, mm -hmm. and listen. And, you know, of course, they need to have that sincere desire, don't they? And that's yes. the, the thing I see a lot of people on earth, because of there being so many distractions, um, many, of, many people on earth, you know, start to feel a desire. Then they either get distracted or they get sort of misled by their desire, don't they, sometimes mm. into, into sinning more through following a what would have began as a proper, uh, which could have been a pure desire, but yes. but it gets tainted through influence yes. um, into come sometimes being damaging. And and I suppose there, uh, this is one aspect I'd like to ask you about, about how do you help uh, the people you're helping on earth to make a, a proper moral choice from God's perspective? Um, mm. Because, uh, you know, people on earth would not realise that much of your work is is attempting to help them to make better moral choices and decisions. Yes, and what I'm learning about morality is that if I were to influence directly the choice of a person to make, so for example, if they have four choices ahead of them and one of them is moral, from their perspective, they have four choices and, mm -hmm. and I know one of them to be moral. If I was to influence them directly to make that choice without first them 
being open or educated in some way about why the choice is moral, then... Then the, you would be immoral. I would be immoral. <laughs> and the, yes. the, the work, the, the morality would not truly exist in the individual. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I find this, I find the... the process of an individual developing morality is is wonderful and yes so my role is really to educate in in these these ways that we have yeah. a person about morality so mm. that hopefully they will make a moral choice yes we cannot influence their choice without that actually prevents their development in morality that's right now i, I think uh, to just take this uh, discussion a little bit further though and um, we want to help people on earth understand that while there are spirits who are trying to help them positively and trying to help them to recognize what a moral choice is mm -hmm that those spirits are not trying to force them into making that choice. They're just trying to help them recognise that that is the best choice and that is the mo a moral choice. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. But the second thing we need to state at this point, I feel too, is that and there are dark spirits often around the person who don't have that uh, moral feeling in themselves no. and they're perfectly happy to influence the person down a dark road. <laughs> Have you noticed that with your people that you're helping? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very often. Very often. And at times there are spirits similar to myself uh, as I was when we met. But at other times there is more of an insidious immoral influence, which is simply ancestral in the just a grandfather mm -hmm. or a a great aunt who really does not has not left the earth plane yet mm -hmm. so, so not a spirit who hasn't progressed yes yeah. they have beliefs that it is good to influence the, their family mm -hmm. and their choices and in even in that belief they are not morally developed but mm. there may be many other ways in which they lack moral development and they are very happy to influence the choices of their descendants. Mm. And this creates a lot of havoc. And sometimes we are just at the point where the person is questioning and the person is beginning to understand that their choices do have do matter to their own and other people's uh, well-being. And they're just ruminating or thinking or pausing or we've been able to to educate them through a series of stimulus or events that have caused them to to almost learn a little mm -hmm. about morality and then just at that moment because they have a feeling of connection or desire to please mm -hmm. someone in their family they can be influenced into an immoral choice mm -hmm or even sometimes into the moral choice, but it was not for the moral reason. Exactly. Like, whereas somebody who's, you know, with some spirit has thought, this is the best thing for you and I'm going to really yes. impress upon you. You have to do this. Yes. And if you don't do this, I'm going to threaten you even. And, and, yes. and these kind of treatment, although sometimes it does lead to a, a choice that looks moral mm. because it doesn't come from the heart of the person. It's really not a moral choice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that would be interesting, I think, for most people to understand because, because then they could ponder about the different thoughts that pop into their mind during the course mm. of a day and, and, and perhaps even be able to be sensitive to, okay, this kind of a thought is trying to influence me quite firmly down to a certain, po certain path. Perhaps the spirit driving that is, is, is probably, you know, yeah, particularly if it's the path is quite mm. <laughs> probably going to end up in some disaster. Um, you know, perhaps the spirit driving that is not, not such good condition. Mm. Mm. And I would add, because it's very difficult 
for people to discern or what I have noticed. It's very difficult for people to discern the difference between an external influence and their own rumblings, mm-hmm. sometimes even of the conscience or, or as a result of this, this education we've given. And so when a person is feeling drawn towards a choice, rather than questioning the who is influencing me, it is often very beneficial to question, is my choice a moral choice? Yes. To question the morality of the choice, because as mm-hmm. soon as they do that, even if they are being influenced, they are again focused on their own moral development, Correct, yeah. which will make it their own development if they do take the moral choice. Yeah, and they have then the ability to make the decision without without whatever the influences are, you know, and this yes. is the problem on earth, isn't it? Very few people actually make decisions that are not influenced That's because right. they don't adhere to some moral, uh, you know, and particularly to God's moral code. Yes, yeah, so... Most people pass without any established development in morality because they have made all of their choices based on desire for approval, desire to avoid disapproval or or some other belief system. Well, uh, now we sort of come to probably the last series of questions I'd like to ask you before you go Mm -hmm. uh, because Mary's starting to feel a bit tired now. and um, So, so... Uh, what I'd like to ask you about is is your life now, like in terms of, you know, where where you are mm-hmm. in the spirit world, mm-hmm. in, in terms of uh, the surroundings you have, the the home you have, and and those kind of things. Okay. 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 So can we start uh, firstly with your description of your surroundings, if that's possible? It's hard sometimes. <laughs> it is difficult. And my surroundings change a lot because yes, I because you're growing all the time. I grow a lot, <laughs> and and I so how many travel houses, a lot. <laughs> so how many houses you've had since you since we met you last? I I don't know. Uh, at least twenty. <laughs> Most people would be very surprised to hear that because that's like how long ago was it when we talked last? It's probably only three or four months ago, or it might be six months now. It's, well, for <laughs> me, for me, it seems a, a long, long time. time. Mm. Yeah, so you've moved a lot. Yes. <laughs> so it's yes. a good thing you didn't become too attached to one of those. Homes. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have got the next one, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, I love simplicity. Yeah. And so my homes are very beautiful. And my current home involves a lot of, it is difficult to describe, There's nothing really quite like it on earth, but it's almost as if the the nature, the nature is a part of the, I'm in nature in the, in the home. Mm -hmm. I can't call it a house. It's Mm -hmm. a home. And perhaps it's because also I'm still working through residue of feeling so constrained in my life on earth. Yes. I have a very open feeling mm-hmm. to the place that I am and I'm very connected to nature. There are, there are plants and grasses and trees mm-hmm. and so much that is really a part of my home. It's as if outside and inside are really... Wow. Uh, you can't tell the difference between them, really. Hazy difference mm-hmm. between the two. Mm-hmm. But there is a... It is mine and there are yep. places here and there are some walls and constructs, but yeah. it's, it's... So can we say that it's mostly made out of plant, like living matter? Yes, mm. yes, yes. Which, which a lot of people on earth, you know, when they read other books, they sort of think it's still sometimes as, you know, just physical structures that are not living. Mm. 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 But... It, Everything here is living. Yeah. Yes. Now, your, but your first homes, were they like that? No. No. What, what were your first homes like, if we can have sort of cast back to those? Well, my very first homes that I recall, again, I haven't had much. There was... Just had a bad 
day of failure. Oh, welcome back, everyone. We we just had a big power failure <laughs> just earlier, and on the on, and it happened to knock us out for the whole day. So now we're actually on the next day, and I'm here with Mary, and we're trying to reconnect to Constance just to finish off our channeling with her. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, we were at the time asking her about her first home in the spirit world, and so that's where we're going to begin our conversation again today. <laughs> Well, hello again. G'day, Judy. How are you? <laughs> um, sorry about Dave having to call you back there another time. <laughs> yeah. Just as we were talking about the power failure things, off goes a power failure. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So at the time we were talking to you about your home and, and we talked about your homes, plural, because you said you had 20 or so of them. And uh, we, we, we were take, casting you back to your first home and you were saying how you, you didn't remember much of it because you were spending a lot of time emotional rather than worrying too much about your environment. But if we could just cast you back to that time and if you could describe to us your home, if that's possible. Certainly. <laughs> uh, my home at that time was very restrictive and small. It was dark and really resembled prison bars. Mm. In a very, it was as if I was encased in a very narrow way. And this was helping me really to, to confront what was needed to be confronted. Inside, so, of, inside of you, you, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so your home mirrored your feelings about your life and your condition? Yes. Yes, very much. And, of course, this is the way it works here. Mm. <laughs> Every home is such. It's and a very loving provision, isn't it? It is. It's a lovely, lovely provision that God's made that allows you to more... In the spirit world, you've got this beautiful ability to connect with your emotions better if you just you know, accept the environment that is there that you've now attracted and created for yourself. Yes. Yeah. And this is why I have had many homes because yeah. uh, I have made great changes as we had discussed already. And so even in my restriction that felt, I felt it was hard to call it a home. <laughs> it was simply my, it, it was a construction around me though. And really it was so narrow as for me to feel as if I could hardly move. So, so I, you could say it's an environment more than a home really, yes. like an environment to help you go through the emotions that you needed to go through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And have you had a chance to look at many people uh, who are in the hellish condition and See their locales, or or at this stage, or have you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. So you you would have seen how a lot of them don't even really have a home of any kind. Yeah. No, and I suppose each place, each environment, each personal environment that we create here, it is apt to call it a home, but in many senses, it is not a home as people may experience upon the earth. Yeah, like someone in Western society has a home, not, not, not like that. In fact, those kind of homes are usually start to begin in the, in the upper levels of the first sphere, don't they, rather than um, sort of in the, lower, in the lower areas of the first sphere. Yes, mm -hmm. and really the uses of a home on earth and the way that a home is used and treated and changes hands on the earth it's very different to yeah. how it is now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and this was something that a lot of our listeners will realise, but probably only after they've passed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that was your first home and, and uh, um, obviously helped you, helped the environment helping you to connect emotionally to how you were feeling. And obviously your feelings changed quite significantly then for you to have so many homes in such a short, short space of time. Yes. 
And one memory that I have very strongly when I was in my first home was the experience that I think I touched on yesterday of feeling such loving presences come to me even while I was in that home when I began to long for, for really a solution. And the, the love and assistance came immediately and I have the memory of being in such an encased place but with this love surrounding me. And that was the beginning of the change yeah. of my encasement and the beginning of a new home. Now, over the progress of those homes, is there any that sort of stand out to you emotionally as quite significant for you? Each. Each is significant mm. in, in its own way. Mm. But I would say that there was a time as I progressed from that hellish state in which you first met me, uh, where I moved beyond some anger and I began to to experience myself as a human being mm -hmm. and not as a slave. And not just as a ball of rage either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That I, I did have a home which was really my dream when I was on earth. And it was a home, it was better than my dream <laughs> in that everything was my heart's desire at that time and it was all mine. <laughs> and that home was actually had far more walls than the one I currently am in. Yes. But, uh, because at that time, my idea of perfection and, and such was my condition that I could uh, embrace my desire and my dream or yeah. that it, my dream was constructing this home, that it, it had four big walls and a number of rooms. It wasn't large, but it wasn't tiny yeah. and it was mine and, <laughs> and I could be there and do what I wished to do yeah. and never before in my life on earth or even until that point, had such a such a thing I, had I experienced ever such a thing? I had a garden yeah. and I had a place of my own yeah. where I could be, and there was no demand upon me that I must uh, serve or or be a certain way. Yeah. And that was perhaps one that stands out quite a lot. It wasn't as magnificent or pretty as many of the other homes. But it was very, very special. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, isn't it, how things like that sometimes stand out because it's, the first, it's often the first time that you have a specific experience that the memories are oftentimes the most, uh, you know, we remember those particular memories the, the most, yes. isn't it? The first time that something happens, yeah. Okay, so um, we, we haven't asked about the sphere you're in now, so let's uh, do that. What, what, what location of the spirit world are you in now? I'm in the fifth sphere, the commencement of the fifth sphere. Yeah, wonderful, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a very large transition between where you were and now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, you would have also met up with very, uh, uh, quite a number of very lovely people, obviously, during this uh, progress. Yes. So, so during this time, have you, you, you're at the stage now where you're still discovering yourself, I gather. Yeah. Yes. And probably haven't thought too much about your soulmate. Is that correct? No. 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 So, I know. I know. You know you have one. <laughs> yes. And I know there is talk of one. And, yeah, and I know yeah. that this is ahead of me. Yeah. But this new transition really uh, from the fourth into the fifth, it, it's very special for me. And mm. it is a delight to discover in my heart a desire to serve <laughs> those upon the earth who carry these, these same problems that mm. I did. That is not bidden from me. It is something that I wish to give and, mm. and that is a unique and special experience of myself and knowing myself. 
So yes, as you say, I'm still learning a lot about my, my nature and my true heart's desires. And, but I know that the, um, the importance of a soulmate is there mm. and I will learn a lot about that. I have no doubt. Mm, in, in probably quite space. soon, I would suggest. Yeah, because yeah. it's usually during that fifth sphere uh, education that we learn a lot about ourselves and then also about the other half of ourselves, yeah. Mm. So that's, that's wonderful uh, news, really, isn't it? Uh, for, uh, I th I'm sure a lot of our listeners will think that's wonderful <laughs> news too, that, that somebody can make such a large transition in what appears from an earth perspective to be a short period of time and um, for yourself as as uh, i think you've already stated obviously our listeners don't sort of appreciate that while you're embroiled in emotions it doesn't always feel feel like <laughs> such a short period of time does it it's a, no i feel it i it has been an age since we first spoke <laughs> yeah, yeah, um yeah. but i feel full of I feel so fortunate and I feel mm. so grateful. I feel grateful to yourself. I feel grateful to God. I feel grateful to all of those wonderful, beautiful people who have helped me uh, in this time. Mm. And I feel that life is so rich, mm. so rich and full of experience and wonder and I never thought that I could reach such a place. And when you're on Earth, you would never have contemplated even that probably such a place exists. No. No. When you first passed, you would have gone through some experiences of your sleep state where you had some points of recollection of your sleep state. Yes. Could you just mention briefly uh, some of the differences between your awake state and your, sleep and your sleep state experiences, which made it difficult for you to contemplate them in your awake state? Yes, it's interesting. I was able to see some variation also in my sleep state experiences throughout the course of my life on Earth. So my early childhood sleep state experiences and in my younger years were really quite free and full of nature and open fields where I could run and play and there weren't restrictions upon me. And this is a blessing. It is a blessing. As I grew older and there was more rage in me that accumulated, there were other sleep state experiences that I had where I began to take actions in my sleep state that were really quite angry in attempts to punish those who were enslaving me and mistreating me. So in other words, if we're a bit more succinct, to punish the people who were alive on earth, who were awake at the time, that you could recognise and go to while you were asleep yes. and trying to influence them in some way. Yes. Yeah. I became then even slightly obsessed with viewing their life, viewing what was happening. The anger was strong in me. And this happens, is very, you know, as you probably would know now, it happens very commonly, doesn't it, where people who are upset with others sort of haunt them while they were asleep. <laughs> While we, the person who's upset is asleep try, and the other person's awake, they try to sort of haunt them while they're all, uh, awake mm. uh, and try to somehow influence them in some way. Um, and so uh, by the time you passed, uh, what was happening with your sleep state experiences then from your memories? It wasn't, and I should state here that my sleep state experiences were not as pronounced as the state that I entered then when I passed in the spirit world. Yes, so yes. they're not the same. So I still had some conditions that were relatively favourable to me in the sleep state, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Certainly. And up until my passing, I still experienced more freedom in my sleep state. But I was, by my own desires, restricting my experience to mm. that of being fostering a vengeful feeling yeah and so it was much it wasn't uh it was much like this when i passed i passed uh not of old age as you know and in some unforeseen experience really mm -hmm. 
and, uh, and quite suddenly. And traumatically. Yes. So um, you could say if you had had a longer life on Earth, that your Earth, your sleep state experience would have finished up approaching yes. your conditions on Earth almost. Yes. Yeah, so. Although it is, it is difficult to measure because yeah. in part the method of my death and the separation uh, from my daughter really uh, kicked something off within me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But certainly, yeah, the anger was growing within me, mm. and so mm. it would have begun to resemble that. And if I was unable to uh, punish those in my immediate physical surroundings who were alive on Earth at the same time, then I would have found others who were doing similar things who were awake to try to attack and punish them. So again, the emotions may have paid a very large part in firstly what you were driven towards then, but also it's played a very large part, isn't it, in your quite significant amount of progress in a short period of time. There's not a lot of people uh, from my recollection who do progress in the spirit world from the hells to the fifth sphere in the space of six Earth months, mm. should we say. So that's a fairly unusual thing, uh, actually, to, to have happen. And I'm sure you would probably know that yourself now, that yes. it's a pretty unusual thing to have happen. And I think that's a testament to your acceptance of your emotions. Mm. So, you know, your acceptance of what you feel at any one point of time. Mm. And I think that's one thing maybe that many of our listeners can take away from our discussion that we've had with you. It, this whole, you know, the way in which you've progressed has been very accepting of your current feelings. And, and if people on earth could be as accepting of their current feelings, it would help greatly assist them. And, and of course, if they had some ethical and moral guidance <laughs> in that process, it could greatly assist them to, uh, to progress as rapidly as mm. well. Mm. Yes, and this is where my first home, when I first spoke with you really and awakened to myself in some way, and mm. the restriction of my first home enabled me to simply feel and simply feel. And I understand that my, the construction of my home was based on my desire to do that, but many people on earth could benefit by locking themselves <laughs> in a room <laughs> when they feel intensely and allowing it to overwhelm them again and again. <laughs> yes, like... Uh, rather than acting upon it. And particularly rather than distracting themselves, which yes. is a huge thing that happens on Earth, isn't it? That, uh, distracting, acting and involving others. <laughs> others. <laughs> yeah, they, it's like they can't bear but to involve <laughs> others yes. to somehow share in the misery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where most people on Earth uh, find it a big struggle, don't they, to go through their own misery alone. And yet, in the end, everyone needs to do that at some point. Yes. Yeah, so, so we can either choose to do it on earth <laughs> or, or, or in the spirit world, or we can resist that process. Exactly, mm. exactly. And I think, I think what's very nice about your experience is that you've chosen to do that, you know, chosen to not distract yourself. Cho and, and also, obviously, during that time, you've obviously had some faith that if you continued doing that. So you see, a lot of people, after they've done that a little bit, they reach, say, the second sphere of the spirit world, and oftentimes that, and that's probably where your first quite nice home was. Yes. Is that true? Yes. And, and then they sort of get there, and then there's this sort of feeling of um, relief and, uh, and satisfaction that at last there's some relief from the pain. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people then go into that state, don't they, in that, in that sphere, um, where they stay there for many years, sometimes hundreds and hundreds of years, mm. uh, because they feel, you know, no need to progress from that point. Mm. So uh, before you go, I'd just like to ask you about why it was that that didn't hit you. You know, what, what was going on inside of you at that time to stop you from sort of feeling a sense of satisfaction once you've reached that first sort of perfect home that mm. you felt you had? I think there are a number of things within me that perhaps have brought about my rapid change. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel that the assistance that I have received has been uh, enormous. And so I feel that 
I feel uncomfortable with you saying that it is in some way special, the progress, because I know how much love and assistance has come to me. And Yeah, but Gigi, um, I'm not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> because the reality is that people can receive assistance, but, but not respond to it. Yeah. And obviously you respond to it. So <laughs> I think in, in reality, yeah. There are a number of things. Sure. One is that I am a simple woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not complex or complicated, and I've always been like that. And so I've been able to simply, once I tasted the experience of self-experience, it was difficult for me to give that up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so even in the second sphere there was still a longing to experience more but not just of myself the the love i i suppose my life on earth was without love really from any source and having received some love at the beginning of my progress I really came to long for that love in a, in a strong way. And perhaps that experience, that experience, even that early childhood sleep state experience where I could have such freedom and such curiosity and wonder I suppose that's a part of me that I have wondered, even in my lovely home, I wondered what is more and and I knew what was still within me also. And I longed for, I didn't long for associates, but I longed for this love. And, uh, and the more the longing for the love, the the more wonderful my associates were, but uh, it's difficult for me to say. So, so could exactly. we say perhaps that you had, that you gained some faith that, that more love was available? It seemed to come to me in such abundance mm -hmm. and I seemed to feel from those who came to me that more was possible. Mm. So yes, mm. as you say, perhaps that is faith, mm. that more was possible. And I really didn't think of progressing. It happened without my thought. And I've that, simply been being. Yeah, but it's, I suppose, I, I feel you'll probably have more, later you probably realise more about what has driven this. At the moment you're still in the throes of that self-discovery process, aren't you? Mm. And uh, I do feel that later, when you, as you reflect later, you probably come to see some of the driving factors that are a part of your nature mm. and personality, but also a part of uh, what, what you've longed for but never had, do you know what I mean? It's sort of some, sometimes on earth we, there's a lot of things that we don't, we long for and never have, and some of us shut down to the longing altogether. And other people, you know, while they might be angry and frustrated that they never have those things, they don't shut down to the longing of it either. Mm. And, and, and it's just interesting, I, I, I notice, and this is why I asked the question, everyone seems to have a different approach sometimes, but, but it's that second sphere area where you really start to see the people who almost become indolent. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but... Uh, we certainly almost uh, like experience more of a laissez-faire sort of an attitude where, where I'll take everything now as it comes mm. rather than continuing to develop desire. And, and what I've noticed with yourself is that you haven't stopped ha having a desire. Mm. Even though you're satisfied with what you do or what you have got, you, you've never held on to what you've got as now I can't give this up no. and move on to the next thing. And, and you've always honoured your, in your progress, honoured your desire. Mm. 
over this period of time, you know, and and I feel that's a big lesson for many people on Earth because many of us on Earth uh, have desires that have been thwarted or or never satisfied. And instead of feeling the grief of that, there's a tendency to shut down to desire altogether. And and yet mm. you had desires on Earth that were never satisfied, mm. and yet you never really shut down to the concept of desire once you had the possibility of it opened to you again. And, uh, and I don't know why, though. Mm. Mm. I think in time you'll probably understand more about why. But it's an interesting... It's an interesting thing for people, I feel, on earth to contemplate because, you know, as you know, there's not a lot of what I would classify as really pure desire, not driven by need or addiction, but pure desire to love and be loved and pure desire for more truth and, and a pure desire and, and faith that actually a more happiness is possible. Mm. We, we often get to the stage where we really believe that what we have is all we're ever going to get. Mm-hmm. And, and then we sort of enter this hopeless phase or state. So, yeah, that's why I asked that question of you, and I, I realise that it's difficult to answer while you're still working through how you feel about yourself. Um, but it is something that I've been pondering about a lot in terms of helping people on Earth, you know, mm-hmm. because of it being such a shut-down state here on Earth mm-hmm. with regard to desire and honouring desire. Mm. Yes, it's very interesting what you say, and mm. it's interesting in terms of the work that I I do. feel passionately that I want to do. Mm. So I I will think more on this. Yeah, it's sort of like what what I myself and Mary are finding at helping people is it, you've got to find, don't you, what motiv- what mm. motivates or what what causes the lack of motivation in order to help them change with with regard to that particular thing. And if you can work through what is the lack of motivation, then obviously when we're helping them, we, we have a greater chance to help them then. And that's, uh, you know, that's something that we've been contemplating about how to go about sort of doing that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Mm. Perhaps we can speak again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, when you've, when you've, obviously in your helping process that you've been involved in, one of the things you're going to be very interested in is trying to help people mo- be motivated uh, in a different way, right? And and uh, it's a very interesting question: what causes motivation or desire uh, to change? You know, from from a place of hopelessness to a place where we don't give up, you know, and we mm. continue with our desires. Mm. Yeah. But I'd like to thank you for your time and coming and for coming back again this morning uh, from yesterday's outage. And, uh, and thank you so much for your experience. I'm sure a lot of our listeners will benefit from hearing about your experience, actually. Yeah. Thank, thank you for asking and speaking with me. I really came simply to express my gratitude to mm. you and I do yeah, thank again. You. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We, we, we love doing what we do, as you know. So um, to us, uh, it feels like, you know, it's who, who we are. It's not really something you think, need to thank us for. But, um, but yeah, thank it you for that. And truly a gift. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a great thing being able to be back on earth and helping people who possibly you can't help the same way when you're in the spirit world. Hey? It's yes. like you will notice there's, there's still many people who are in that sort of earthbound enraged state that you were in when we first met you. Mm. And uh, I just wanted to ask before we close, there was a group with you, um, if you remember, even though yes. you weren't conscious of each other much at the time. I was wondering how that group, uh, how, what, you know, what's happened to their group? Have you, have you sort of kept up with many of the people who were surrounding with you? Or? Yes, and yeah. some of my work has been to attempt to assist them. Yeah. Uh, and there is some varied results, but I can say that every one of them is no longer in that same state that that's I wonderful. was in. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. So, it is wonderful. Yeah, so they're no longer trying to uh, influence people on earth to attack other people. That's right. Yeah, that's very, very good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I'm very happy about that result. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. as are we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you for your time and uh, we look forward to hearing your progress and when when you do, perhaps the next time uh, you come, maybe should be the time when you've met your soulmate and we can 
we can have a chat about that process and what that felt like for you. More adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for your time. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, we'll catch you later. GG.